Weil ich dich darum bitte und weil ich sonst gezwungen bin, den Router raus. The ultimate threat is to disconnect the router. He doesn't believe she dare. Don't push me, she says. And so the crass rudeness continues. To start with, we always said, it's not a problem. We'll just switch the thing off if he didn't come and sit down to his meals. But it's a real addiction. There's no one time when you can say someone's gone over the precipice. It's a gradual process. It's like having a zombie here who's not himself anymore, and all he can say is, I must go and play on the computer. And he starts trembling. He can't live without his computer. My mum doesn't mind me playing, of course, but she thinks I do it too much. I don't do anything else, because most of my friends in the neighborhood play online just as much as I do. The difference is, they have no problem at school. I used to be good at school, but the first few years were okay. And along came the Internet, World of Warcraft, Counter-Strike. The Internet, World of Warcraft, Counter-Strike, I6, have you begun? The games are addictive when you all play together. Die Spiele machen süchtig. Alle, alle miteinander. This is the world that fascinates the youth of today, the virtual world. It's a world that's outside the experience of many adults. Children no longer go out to play, they play online. The goal is always to come out on top, quite simply. Computer games are the new youth culture. Hundreds of young people meet in so-called LAN parties like here, sometimes several thousand. But these major festivals only happen once or twice a year. Mostly the players are alone in front of their computers at home. A harmless pastime, that's how most people see it, but for an increasing number, it's the whole content of their lives. Internet forums are full of reports of computer game addiction. My daughter's 18 and has been playing this game for two months. She's become increasingly withdrawn. I'm 14 and I'm seriously addicted to World of Warcraft. The game made him lie to us and go behind our backs. It hurts to see how this addiction has changed him. I sit here close to tears. I'm at the end of my tether. Mr. and Mrs. Hirte get emails like this almost daily. Here's another one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello, we're trying to find a way of getting our friend off his Warcraft addiction. Desperate parents who have no idea what to do about their children who can't leave their computers. None of them know how to cope with computer addiction. Most find their way to the website run by Christina and Christoph Herter. That's precisely what we want for people to look at the site. Rollenspielsucht.de, roleplay addiction, a self-help forum. A nice part of the work is personal telephone calls, for example, from affected mothers, where we talk on a mother-to-mother -mother basis. We aren't specialists, we're just affected parents ourselves. Every evening, Christoph Hirter works on his website. It's a labor of love, but there's a reason. The Hirter's son is a computer game addict. I'm quite open about it. I say that we've lost our son to the internet and that he's an internet addict. I want to talk about it, simply tell the story. I want to tell other people to take a good look at this site. Schaut da mal bitte genau hin. We knew nothing about it at first, and I'm sure that many other people don't think it concerns them. Denken auch viele andere, ja, das geht mich ja überhaupt nichts an. This is what puts computer gamers under its spell: World of Warcraft, the internet game that the Hirter's 23-year-old son has fallen victim to. It's one of the most successful computer games ever. It's played by more than 10 million people worldwide. An online role-play game that never ends.
It's the same game that takes up six hours of Mark Oliver's day, every day. The game for which he neglects everything else, his schoolwork, his appearance, his nutrition, his family, his friends. Wow, the players call it. Each one has his own figure or avatar. The more you play, the stronger your avatar becomes. It works according to a perfectly normal system of rewards. Other games work the same way. You fulfill your assignment and you get something in return. It may be experience, it may be money, or it may be equipment. But it all makes you stronger. Mostly you have to kill monsters and they knock things down. And of course you want more. More and more. You want more gold or better equipment so that you can go up a level. And somehow you get addicted because you want to achieve more and more and stay at the top. To stay at the top, sooner or later you need allies, a team known as a guild. Mark Oliver's guild introduced themselves. They each have their own specialisms. They communicate via team speak, agreeing to join up for important battles. Those who can't make it have to give advance warning. If you don't say anything, that's just crap. It really is disappointing because you rely on each other. You rely on the others and they rely on you. Each avatar has its own function. To win, you need warriors, shamans, mages and others besides. Mark Oliver's avatar is a powerful dwarf, never without a tiger by his side. A battle like this is called a rate. And when a rate starts at six, you can't join the family for tea at the same time. After all, you want to be there when the guild subdues an important enemy. You're proud to have achieved that. But it isn't just down to you, it's down to the guild. The crew you achieve it with. It's success. You're happy. You've been successful. You're proud of yourself and of the group. You need a lot of ambition and, above all, a large measure of discipline to achieve something like that. If not everyone does what was agreed beforehand, it goes pear-shaped. In Mark Oliver's real life, discipline plays less of a role. His parents are going away for a while and have a list of things for him to do. Not that he can be bothered even to look at his mother when he speaks to her. Consultant psychiatrist Oliver Bilke has seen the consequences of computer addiction often enough. Often enough, these young people land up in a psychiatric ward, such as here in the Vivantes Hospital in Berlin. This stage is usually reached when tensions between parent and child escalate beyond control. You have to remember that most of these games are aggressive in nature. The players don't spend their time counting flowers. The content of the games is aggressive. And then suddenly, mother comes into the room, or father, and the craziest situations arise. The classic situation is for her to pull the plug, and then an addictive behavior is interrupted from one moment to the next. Any serious addict reacts to such a situation with a proper explosion of aggression. Then you have to decide, is this situation so dangerous, so threatening, 
thinking that I have to call the police? It's not unusual for computer addicts to be brought to the hospital in handcuffs. Here, they're rehabituated to a normal daily routine without a computer. We see young people who've got other young people to stand in for them in the computer game while they're in hospital, so that they can start up again as soon as they're discharged. So we have some motivation work to do. We notice young people who start trembling in the evening when they would otherwise be at the computer. They get anxious and confused. They need the evening ritual of spending hours playing online. Bernd was in his late 30s when he discovered World of Warcraft and suddenly the computer expert in a steady job found he could be a courageous hero fighting side by side with mages, dwarves and shamans. Bernd increasingly disappeared into the virtual world. My personal perception and fantasy was to become a hero there. In the end, I was playing on two computers to do things that no one else had achieved because it was no longer possible on one. Um, During the time I was sitting at the computer, I felt invincible. The invincible hero ended up occupying a chair between alcoholics and pinball addicts at group therapy sessions. Bernd simply collapsed from exhaustion. He had himself admitted to a psychiatric hospital. Only there did he realize he was addicted, addicted to computer games. In the Aachen University Clinic, they are trying to find out what happens in someone's brain when they play on the computer. This is one of the few research centers to be looking at this problem. Using an MRI scan, the scientists are examining the brain of a test subject while he plays. They want to see which parts of the brain are active. The results of such experiments have led Professor Matiak to astonishing conclusions. The brain is far more stimulated by computer games than by reading or watching TV. Only real life can compete. What we see is that the subjects are highly involved while they play. But that also means that their emotional systems react as well. That tells us that for the brain, this is more than just a game where you're just trying something out. You really are in there with your emotions. The enjoyment of these games results primarily from the reward system in the brain, which constantly releases small quantities of dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter responsible for feelings of pleasure. If you lose or end a game, the dopamine is no longer released. So, to maintain the pleasure, you just have to go on playing. Christina and Christoph Herter keep looking at the photographs of the last holiday they took together with their three sons. That was in summer 2006. Everything seemed fine until the parents saw their son's student flat for the first time. I'd never seen a flat in such a state. It was absolutely filthy. Unfortunately, we had to throw most of the things away. We couldn't imagine how anyone could have lived in such a place. Things must have got very serious. It was like nothing we had ever seen. We suddenly realized our boy needed help. He was sick. The Hirtas' son had gone to rack and ruin because he did nothing but play computer games. He hardly ever attended lectures. Beside themselves with worry, the parents tried everywhere to seek advice. Finally, they went to see an addiction counsellor. They arranged for their son to be admitted to a psychiatric hospital. They made a contract with him. They would only support him financially if he underwent therapy. When he realised we wanted him to undergo treatment as an inpatient, at first he simply couldn't take it in. But I'm an obstinate type and in the end he agreed to do it. We were very relieved. We offered him the contract we'd been advised to draw up. He read it through and at first he was very confused about the finances. Then he said, I'll sign it. Half an hour passed and he grew quieter and quieter and paler and paler. 
Das ging eine halbe Stunde, wurde stiller und stiller und blasser und blasser. Und dann Then he got up, packed his things and said he couldn't live without it after all. I looked out of the kitchen window when he walked away with his luggage in a rucksack. I knew this was a momentous occasion. I wondered when we'd see each other again. It's unimaginable. I can't describe it. And when did they see him again? Never. That was more than a year ago, and since then we've heard nothing from him. Bernd has now completed his therapy. We met him again a year after he left hospital. The once invincible hero of World of Warcraft is nearly 40. Jobless, friendless, lonely. Only now has he realized the extent of his addiction. This was bound before his computer addiction. A young man in his own house, quite successful in other words. He was the systems administrator in a medium-sized company until he discovered World of Warcraft and started to neglect everything else. It's not nice to have to say it, but I didn't wash and eating was a luxury. I personally drank a lot of milk because I imagined that was sufficient. At that time, I smoked heavily too, but I was never hungry. I ate something together with my mage. I know that sounds silly. Sometimes I rapidly lost weight without noticing. I finally did notice when I just collapsed. Bernd's girlfriend of many years begged and beseeched him, but she had long since lost the battle against the mages and shamans. She moved out. Bernd carried on playing. Yes. My life went to pieces. I simply ignored all the friends I might have had. Every phone call I saw was a nuisance. Now I know what effect it had. After 72 hours, you're no longer in charge of anything. Every additional unwanted noise makes you aggressive. And the people on the phone noticed that. Man wird aggressiv. Das merken die Leute am Telefon. Ja. Ich sag mal so, das kann man. Ich habe wegen diesem The game caused me to miss my sister's funeral. I spent 72 hours asleep on the sofa. I thought I'd managed to stay awake till the morning, but I did fall asleep until my mother phoned at midday to ask where I was. Bis um 12 Uhr mittags meine Mutter mich angerufen hat und gefragt hat, wo ich bin. Grown-ups who throw away their whole livelihood. Teenagers who can't be dragged away from their computers. Are these isolated cases? Are they people who have some psychological problem anyway? The experts are beginning to suspect as much. The crucial question is, is the computer game the decisive factor? Is this the young people's problem? Or does this dependency conceal other problems? Our experience says otherwise, says Christoph. Many people write to them, and he now thinks that it can happen to anyone. Bound had a clear goal for the period following his therapy. A life without a computer. Difficult for someone who'd earned his living with computers for years. Even so, he wants a fresh start and feels a new man since his treatment. Free. Really free. For the first time, I have no computer. It's all been dismantled. The first thing I did was rearrange my flat, clean everything. For one thing, I'd given up smoking while I was in hospital. The nicotine had to go. I had enough to do all day. I wasn't bored. At the moment, Bound is not playing, but the computer is still there, a constant temptation. Every day, he sits in front of it and writes job applications. He would like to work in this sector again. After all, it's impossible to avoid computers entirely these days. Bound has to be resolute. Every day he has to battle against the blandishments of World of Warcraft. My great wish is not to find any more excuses to play World of Warcraft. 
If anyone asks me, then I go jogging, play badminton or something like that, but definitely not play WoW. That's the future I want for myself and what I'm working on now. A special day in the Matisen household. Mark Oliver is going to cook a meal for the whole family. Roast goose. If a thing's worth doing, it's worth doing well, he says. That's what you want to see as a mother. I'm very proud of him. Mark Oliver's now an apprentice chef. It's demanding work and he's enjoying it. He's occupied all day long and properly tired in the evening. Now he can't afford to play all night. Slowly, real life is taking over. To his mother in particular, Mark Oliver wants to prove that he's taking his traineeship seriously. Of course, I'm doing this in part for my mother to show her that I can do something, and I can, obviously. Right, the meal's ready. I hope they enjoy it because that's the cook's reward, not the money. A cook wants to see people enjoying his food. Good appetit. Mark Oliver wouldn't be Mark Oliver if an afternoon like this went off entirely without mishaps. But his mother isn't worried. She knows her son, and today she's satisfied. I hope he'll carry on like this, then everything will be okay. That's good. The Heaters haven't heard from their eldest son for more than a year. He has refused any contact, but still they write letters, send photos. His younger brothers even paint pictures for him, but they never get an answer. We no longer have the son we once had. The picture we're forced to make of him is quite different. It's a grieving process, really. It really is. When you look at his life now, it's as if he'd been swallowed up. He leaves no traces. These are blank years. Nothing has happened. For the Hirtas, the battle against computer game addiction has become the focus of their lives. This is helping them to cope with the loss of their son. On the first page of our website is the subtitle, We have lost our son to the internet, to World of Warcraft. We're looking forward to the day when it says, We once lost our son to the internet. <laughs> That would be very nice. 